Hi everyone, it's Mr. Kwan again, and today we're going to continue talking about functions. Now, in the gas station problem, we created the linear equation y equals 2.29x plus 7, and we can rewrite this using function notation. And these two notations are interchangeable, but mathematicians tend to prefer writing it in function notation. And the thing on the left-hand side, we refer to that as f of x. And the reason that we use f is because that's the first letter of the word function, but sometimes you'll see g of x or h of x. But most commonly, when we're talking about functions, we'll use f of x. Now, the thing inside of the parentheses is the input or the independent variable. In this case, that is x. The overall term represents the output or the dependent variable, and in this case that is f of x. Now when you're talking about functions, you'll very commonly hear these two terms, domain and range. The domain is the set of all input values, and the range is the set of all output values when you're referring to a function. Let's go ahead and refer back to my vending machine example. So the domain in this example would be the set of all input values, and the inputs were represented by the codes that you could push. So here in this example, the domain is A1, A2, B1, and B2. And whenever you have a finite set of values in your domain, what we do is we list them out and separate them with commas and place them between these sets of curly brackets. Same thing for the range. If the range has a finite set of values, then you stick them between a set of curly brackets and separate those by commas. Now in this example, our range is all of the output values. And remember, here our outputs were the snacks that were being released from the vending machine. So our range is going to be just the list of the snacks, the ice cream sandwich, the hot Cheetos, the Snickers, and the gummy bears. Let's think about domain and range in terms of the gas station example. So our function that we have is f of x equals 2.29x plus 7. And let's just say for this example that your car holds a maximum amount of 15 gallons of gas. So that means that your domain would be all possible amounts of gasoline that you could put in your car. So let's start creating that list for our domain. So our domain would consist of one, because you could put one gallon of gas in your car. It would contain 1.2, because you could put 1.2 gallons of gas in your car. It would contain 1.25, 1.259, and so on and so forth. Hopefully you've been thinking about this now, and you've come to the realization that if you continue to list all of the values, eventually this is going to be you. And the reason that is, is because even though we're only looking at numbers between 0 and 15, there's actually an infinite amount of numbers between 0 and 15. And so if you tried to list them all out, you would never be able to just because there's an infinite amount of them. And so the way that we work around that is whenever you're talking about domain and range and the domain and range contains an infinite number of values, then we can represent the domain and range in three different ways. The first way is in words, and we've basically already touched on this and said that the amount of gas that we could put in our car is any real number between 0 and 15, including 0 and including 15. Now, that's a mouthful, and it's a lot to write, so mathematicians can be lazy sometimes, and we want to be efficient. So then they created inequality notation. 
and you've probably seen inequalities before. They kind of look like the alligator mouths, where the alligator mouth is pointing towards the larger number because it wants to eat the larger number. And so here, our domain is represented by this inequality. And the lines underneath the inequality symbols just represent that our domain includes the value 0 and includes the value 15. The last type of representation for our domain is interval notation. And basically, you just want to put your two endpoints or end values, which are 0 and 15, and separate them with a comma, and then place them in between a set of brackets. Now, the brackets denote that we are including 0 and we are including 15 in our domain. If 0 and 15 were not included in our domain, then we would set those numbers inside of a set of parentheses. Now, before we start talking about the range, I wanted to show you the graph of our linear function on the xy plane. The x values represent the amount of gasoline in gallons, and the y values represent the total cost in dollars. Now, if you think back to what our domain was, here on our graph, we can actually see our domain represented through the x values. And so what that's going to mean for our range is our range is the set of y values on our graph. And if you look at our graph, we can kind of figure out what the lower value of our range is. And that's going to be 7, because that's the amount in tip that we would be giving the parking or the gas station attendant. So that's going to be the lower value of our range. It's not quite as clear what the upper value of our range is. And we could figure that out algebraically by doing some computation. So we know that the maximum amount of gas that we can put in the car is 15 gallons. And so if we plug in 15 into our function and we calculate the cost, we see that it's going to be $41.35. So going back to our range, again, our range represents all the values that can be taken on by how much we're going to be paying in our total cost. And so our range in words is all real numbers between 7 and 41.35, including 7 and including 41.35. In inequality notation, it's going to look similar to the domain, except in the middle, we're going to put f of x because we're representing our output values. And our range is going from $7 to $41.35. And lastly, interval notation is going to look like this. 7 is going to be on the left-hand side, and then a comma, and then 41.35. And again, because we're including both of those values, we're going to put them in between a set of brackets. Lastly, I just want to show you different types of functions other than just linear functions. We have quadratic functions, cubic functions, square root functions, absolute value functions, and exponential functions. And we'll see some of these functions later in our class, but some of them we won't see in this class, and you'll likely see them if you take more math classes in the future.